Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday night. What are you doing? Are you laying in your bed? Are you sitting in your chair? Are you flying around the country? <laughs> uh, wouldn't you like to know? All right, so let's see what is going on. We got some people in here. We got Sammy, and he says, hi, everybody. How are you, Sammy? Hope you're safe. And uh, Jim, I almost called you today, Jim. <laughs> I said, I haven't talked to you in a while, but I couldn't remember if you were back from uh, Las Vegas or not. So I figured I better not call and interrupt and all that kind of good stuff. And what can I tell you? So you almost got a call today, Jim. And Woody is here and he's in the house. And Woody says, good evening, Peter and everybody. How you doing, Woody? Good to see you. I hope you're doing well up in the Virginia area. And uh, Shane is here. Boy, he took it was a long flight for Shane all the way from Australia. I guess your arms are tired, huh, Shane? So how are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. I think I texted you and it was like borderline late, like 12 o'clock at night. And you didn't answer me, so I didn't pursue it. I figured, hey, if the man is sleeping, let him sleep, okay? So let's see who else we got in here. Randy's here. He ate, and he didn't fall asleep yet, so we'll keep him for a while. And Randy has got, what does Randy have? A uh, new paint job, a new roof, a new camera, a new lens, a new case. Dang, Randy. I want the Randy life. Sounds good. I hope you're feeling good. I know you're kind of tired uh, and stuff like that. And I hope Randy's going to come see me shortly, maybe within the next month or two, because he's doing a lot of remodeling and stuff at his house, and he can't leave it to come over here. So it is Friday, and it is oh, halfway through the month. What camera am I on? I'm on the Panasonic. Halfway through the month. So... What did I title uh, tonight? I titled it the G9 Mark II. And I've been using it now for a little more than a week. And I want to give a rundown on how I like that camera, what I think of it, what's going on. Um, you know, the blue shirt that I wear that I don't like because it's kind of like tight in the lower area and I don't like that. Uh, I, I ordered... Uh, I sent it back and I ordered a large and it's still tight in the bottom area. So what happens, you guys will understand. It's nothing, it's nothing, uh, it's just uncomfortable, okay? So down here, I'll move it up so it doesn't look so weird, okay? On the design or the cut of that shirt, they have that bottom button set way too close. See, now this is a, a Van Heusen shirt. I could sit here and I'm comfortable. And this is a medium. So with the blue shirt, I, I sent the medium back. I ordered the large and it was the same exact problem. So, uh, yes, uh, I don't know if you guys, guys have noticed it or not, but um, there is something different going on in here. Not major. All right, so this is a Van Heusen shirt, and I should say a Van Heusen cut. It makes me feel so much more comfortable. I can sit here, and I don't feel like everything here is loose. It's nice. Actually, it's almost getting to be where the medium is too large. That's saying a lot for my losing weight, which I did get my blood report, and I got the paperwork here on the blood report. So I'm not going to go through the blood report here, but I will do it on my uh, everyday uh, videos. I do a video every day, and it's over, well, I call it almost daily, because it's not every day every day. It's almost daily, Monday through Friday, and, some, and sometimes we have a Saturday, uh, and that goes up on Patreon. So the Patreon uh, group where you signed up on Patreon, you'll get the quote-unquote almost daily videos. So I'll go through the numbers. I can tell you that the numbers are really good. Uh, I, w I lost like 50 pounds, okay? But when I went to the doctor, he said, you, you lost over 60, 65 pounds. And I said, 
okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I, did. I don't think I lost that much because when I weighed myself, I'm still in the same area. So, you know, they put you uh, from the waiting room out front and they put you in the exam room. Okay, and they sit you down in the exam room and they give you a magazine. You know, and I'm looking at the magazine. I don't know. It's like a people's magazine. And I don't know anybody in that magazine. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go through the drawers. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit in there. I'm going to go through the drawers. So I got me some tongue depressors. And I put them in my little satchel. And I'm going to put those in my tomato plants. And they had these uh, like Q-tips that are that like that long. Uh, with a Q-tip thing on the top and a big long stick. Where the heck do they plan on sticking that thing? Well, I got me some of those, and I'm going to spray those red and use them in the Christmas tree. I'll have some, like, red uh, Q-tip things, and I'll put them as decorations in the Christmas tree. And I snagged me some gowns. Yep, I got me some gowns. And I even wore one of the gowns. This is not original material, okay, guys? I even wore one of the gowns out of the doctor's office, just right over my clothes. So I'm going to wear the gown tomorrow morning, and I'm going to wait for the doorbell to ring. And when the doorbell rings, I'm going to go to the doorbell. I'm going to answer the door, and they're going to say, uh, we'd like to come in and talk to you about Jesus. And I'm going to say, come right on in. And then I'm going to turn around and wiggle my butt because I'm going to have that gown on and nothing else on. All right, that's my jokes for tonight. All right, so anyway, I did go to the doctor. I'll read you the A1C, the glucose, uh, the cholesterol. You know, you got three levels of cholesterol. I'll read that in the video. I'm either going to do tomorrow or Monday on my daily videos. So if you want to see those, go over to the link down below uh, on Patreon. And you can get, it, it does cost 25 cents uh, a week uh, for that one where YouTube is free, right? So nothing I can do about that. I can't lower it any lower than that, but I want everybody to be able to come in. So if you want to see my daily videos, I'll do, uh, I'll do recipes. I'll make air fryer French fries. I'll get a new air fryer or return an air fryer, or I'll talk about uh, the G9 Mark II and the lenses that I got. So that's what's on the daily uh, thing. So if you want to uh, click on that uh, and sign up for that, you can get that. Um, I'm trying to disengage from being 100% dependent on YouTube. All right. YouTube has actually taken some of the people that I like and they removed them off the platform because their politics are wrong. Uh, if they don't like your politics, they find a reason and they take you off the platform. Now, they've already taken two of my videos down with no explanation other than I violated the terms of, what is it, service. But they don't tell me what I did. Now, tonight, uh, the Friday night, I actually uh, probably do get close to violating because I'll talk about politics or talk about God and I love Jesus and and you know that's my business and I am what I am and I don't encroach on people and what they believe you're free to believe what you like and I don't censor that or do anything like that so they took down a video and said you violated the terms of service and they take it off when that happens and that means I can't go back and see what the heck I did so that became kind of important. What did I do? Maybe I don't want to do it, or maybe I do. So they actually took uh, down uh, two of my videos. And I know on the big channel, which I will be broadcasting Sunday night on the big channel, okay, and it'll be about this camera probably, uh, because I'd like to bring that to the, the, the big audience that I have, and I'll talk about this camera, uh, which is the, I say this camera, and I get mad when other people do that say what camera it is because I don't know what this camera is and now I'm doing it to you so my apologies the G9 Mark II I will probably be talking about the G9 uh, Mark II and uh, talking about how I like it I have used it uh, probably for uh, a week and that's in comparison to my E1 which is my absolute favorite camera this one has moved right up to be almost equal to the E1. 
But when I noticed, not when I noticed, I did notice when I go to grab a camera, it's the Sony ZV-E1. That's the one I go to grab. Now, I'm not talking about the uh, uh, cameras that are on the, whatchamacallit, the, the tripods, okay? So the cameras that are on the tripods are, uh, you know, I don't grab those and walk around. But when I do the Patreon, my daily uh, vlog videos, where I go like, hey, it's Peter Gregg, I go to grab the uh, Sony E1. I do. I have to say that. Now, I would grab this one, and I have forced myself to use this camera. As a matter of fact, I took the E1 off of my tripod. So when you get around to the other one, look up here. Look up here. You can see what it says? ZV-E10. Okay. So that's that camera. I'm looking at you, kid. All right. So that's that camera over there. It's a 1.4 lens. It's a Sigma and I'm using that there. Now, I had over here, all right, so see this one right here? I had this, uh, the ZV-E1, the $2,000 job over there, but I needed to compare it with this guy, so I took it off, and I put the other E10 over there. So you see over here where it says E10? So, excuse me, I have the Zeiss, you know, the $2,500 job, uh, F1.4 over here, so um, I didn't even check if it's uh, tuned in very well. So um, the, the E1, I've been using it in the kitchen, in the yard. I've used it in the TV room. I've introduced you guys to the TV room, okay, because now the contractors have pretty much finished in that room. Uh, and I like to sit in there and just talk to the camera. It's kind of like a brown setting over there. So I, I do enjoy that. Um, let's see, where was I going with this? Oh, so I go to grab it. So what is my biggest gripe on this camera? The image stabilization, fantabulous. I would say it's almost equal to the E1, which I call that guy a gimbal killer. All right, so this G9 Mark II, everything is in here except there is one major flaw uh, to this camera. Is it a deal breaker? I'm still working that out. I'm working that out in my head. So if you have um, uh, 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 Sony, let's say you got, I had the FX30 here and I think Sammy uses the FX30 um, and I have the E10, which you'll get around to eventually. I got the Nikon Z6. Uh, I've got, uh, uh, I've had Canons in here. They all have something that addresses your skin, all right? I think skin is a very important part of a camera. Uh, the Nikons have skin smoothing. Canon has a clarity slider, which is basically aimed at reducing the sharpness in the midtones. Guess where the midtones are? Right on your skin. So the, the Nikon has a clarity slider. The Canon has a clarity slider. The, Nikon, uh, the Sony... Uh, has not only a clarity slider, it has skin smoothing, all that. The Panasonic's, this one, and the uh, S5 Mark II, it does not address skin. Doesn't even have a mid-tone slider, which the Nikon has a mid-tone slider. So I can actually raise or lower the mid-tones. And when you get into the, uh, the, the, uh, the Z8, it gives you even more. So Panasonic has left anything to do with helping your skin unless I have not found it. Okay, so I did see Shane in here from Australia. If there's something in there for skin, I would consider that 50% or more of what pictures are taken of. I understand landscape and vlogging, walking in a park, which Shane does. He'll go over to that park that's near his house and he'll do videos. And, you know, Shane is a young man. His skin is perfect. Okay, I'm not a young man. My skin is not so perfect. So I have skin smoothing on, on this camera right now. I have it on low. And I have the other one on low. Now, on the E1, I don't think I have the skin smoothing on. But I have the clarity slider, which does an even better job. So that is my biggest gripe. Now, I need to get this across to the bigger audience. So when the big audience uh, is Sunday night 
and I start telling everybody about this camera, I'm going to tell everybody how the image stabilization is absolutely fantastic. It's got, I think, three levels, and I do use it on high. So this is a 9 millimeter lens, which translates to the, uh, to like, 9 and 9 is 18. It translates to uh, an 18 millimeter, which is great for vlogging. I just hold it out. I put the uh, uh, image stabilization if I'm walking around, and I can hold the camera like this, which is not uncomfortable. The camera is definitely heavier than the ZV-E1, okay? But if I hold it fairly close, which this is too close with the 9 millimeter, I'd like to see them come out with an even uh, stronger so it comes in at 15, 16 millimeters. But hey, 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 I'm not complaining. I will take the 9 millimeter, and it's a 1.7. Uh, yeah, it's a 1.7. It does great in low light. So that shocks me. So this camera is my number two favorite camera, and the only reason it isn't equal with my number one with the E1 is because they're not addressing the uh, skin smoothing, and some people are just sensitive about their skin. I'm one of those. What can I tell you? It, it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So let me get back to, to you guys over here. Uh, so Jim Mundy is saying hi to everybody. How you doing, Jim? I said I almost called you but didn't do it. So if I if I remember after I play my front door game with the with the gown, <laughs> you know the gowns are open in the back when you go to the doctor. So I'm just gonna wear the gown and then when they say ding dong and I'll go hello, they oh we want to talk to you about Jesus and I'll say, oh come on in. I'll turn around and then waddle in and they'll probably see my backside and run like heck. Okay, so Jim is saying hi and Sammy is uh, uh, saying it's great to see everybody. Hi, how you doing Sammy? I love you. I love everybody in here. I did say hi to Randy. I love you too, Randy. Uh, Bob Asbury's here tonight. How come you stayed up later tonight? What is going on? Make sure you guys come in Sunday night. I need some support. Okay. Now, Sunday night is very different from here. I don't say hello to everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm laughing at myself. Okay. I am hell-bent to stay on topic on Sunday night because I'm doing a live show with the uh, 38, 39,000 subscribers that I have. And so I don't say, how you doing, Bob? How you doing, uh, Randy? How you doing, Sammy? Oh, I love you. I love you. Raymond, where have you been? I haven't seen you in so long. I did see Raymond put up a, uh, uh, a video, and I said hi to him. I don't do that Sunday night. I'll talk about the camera, and I'm trying as hard as I can to make it 15 minutes long, the live show, and that's it. I could stretch it to 20. Do you know I have not been able to go under 30 minutes? I talk, I talk so darn much. I can't stop the gift of gab. Once I start talking and I'll talk about the shutter uh, button over here and, and I'll start talking and I'll just don't stop. You know what the thing is, when I look at recipes or I look at another uh, video that I'm looking through YouTube, if the video is 25, 35, 40 minutes long, I was just talking to Sly about that. I'm not going to watch it. I don't want to sit there for 30 to 40 minutes and watch a video on a recipe for poached eggs. I don't want to watch a 40-minute video on even a camera, unless it's someone like Shane. It's so packed full of chalk goodness, it's worth watching the whole thing, and you don't lose interest, okay? Okay. So uh, for, the, for the one I'm going to do Sunday night, now this one's an hour. It, it's, it's already been told that this is a 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock show. So it is, it is what it is. And if a person doesn't want to stay for the full hour, they can, they can go and go to Wawa and have themselves a thick shake or a hot dog or a hamburger. Uh, a Wawa is a, a gas station that's got like a built-in restaurant and it's got some pretty good food. Um, and, you know, you can take off uh, because this will come in on the rewind, okay? And that's uh, Randy's uh, word. So Randy says hello. Bob says hello. Uh, Shane says, 
No, no text came through, Peter. You might have been texting my old number. I've been meaning to get with you on that. I'm a little confused, and I'm thinking, oh, I might be. Well, then I didn't wake you up. <laughs> Yay, that's a win for me because I, I, I am notoriously known for waking Shane up in the middle of the night. Shane, you just need to put it uh, so that it's, uh, you know, what do they call it? Sleep mode or do not disturb mode because I feel so guilty every time I do that. I'll call, I'll, uh, I don't call anymore. I find out what time it is before I'll, I'll try to call him. So no text came through. I feel so good about that. So how do you like the green shirt? I'm I'm hopping around everywhere on the topics tonight. It's family. Tonight is family night. I could do that with you guys. I can't do that on Sunday night because they, they don't get it. They don't get why one minute I'll be talking about my underwear and the next minute I'll be talking about the Leica lenses. Oh, by the way, Randy, I saw you got a Leica. Ooh, he is. Oh, Randy, can I get your autograph? Randy has a like that is one of the most amazing cameras. And they have a new SL3, which is the prelude to what Panasonic is going to come with the S1R. All right. So there's the the Panasonic 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 camera company that makes Lumix, okay. Uh, Leica and Sigma are bosom buddies. They're bedfellows. They all work together. So many times you'll get a lens that is made for Lumix, but it's actually manufactured by Sigma. Well, the same thing happens at Leica. Leica actually makes, uh, I'm sorry, Sigma makes, I would say, more than 50% of the Leica lenses. You know how you could tell? The ones that are 2,500 and 3,000 and 4,000, those are actually made by Leica in Germany. Okay. Then the ones that are like 900, 1500, 1800, those are made by Sigma. So uh, Sigma and uh, Leica and Panasonic make stuff for each other. So I think there's a deal between Panasonic and Leica because, you know, the, the sensor and everything, the, uh, the phase, P-H-A-S-E, phase detection, autofocus system, that is in the Panasonic that Panasonic came up with, that was developed together with Sigma. And that wound up in the Q3 Leica camera. So Leica now has the phase detection autofocus system. That's, was, that's what's missing, was missing for so many years on the uh, Lumix cameras. Great cameras, feels actually like a Canon. The button up here for the ISO, the white balance, and the compensation, identical to the Canons. This camera feels like home. Okay, and I already told you what I don't like about it. Where the heck is the skin smoothing? I want something to make my skin look better. ba butter, better. That's New Jersey accent, okay? So uh, when I grab a camera, the uh, Sony ZV-E1, and I've been doing it with this guy, and I'm going to vlog, and I'm going to go like, hey, Patreon family, this is what we're doing today. I just got a, uh, uh, an air fryer today, so we're going to open up the box, and we're going to plug it in and see what it's all about and that kind of stuff. And, or I'll say, hey, I got a 100, is it 100? 100 to 300 zoom lens from Panasonic, that is going to blow you out of the water because, you know, uh, 300 millimeters, guess what it is? It is 600 millimeters. So take that, Woody. 600 millimeters in a lens no bigger than that. Okay? Unbelievable for birding. And I got that in. So I'll do some uh, video with uh, on that, and I'll put it up on the uh, uh, Patreon channel. All right? So uh, that is... Uh, what was I doing? I was saying hi to you guys. Uh, Sammy says, you're looking better than ever, Peter. Aw, oh, Sammy, I bet you say that to all your friends. That's all right. I'm going to give Sammy the biggest hug he's ever gotten in his life. David is here. How are you doing, David? I pop in when I see you. I was a mod. Um, there was one guy I was uh, playing with taking him out. Okay, but I left it alone. Because I saw you were looking, and I figured you can handle it. I, you know, 
because he was getting like a little bit anti of, of specific religion, and that's not basically very nice. How's my volume? I see it it keeps hitting the yellow. So um, if it's too loud, tell me, and I'll lower it down a little bit. So that's what we got. Good to see you, David. You know I love you. You're my Christian brother. We're brothers in the Lord. He has his own channel. Let me put him back up real quick. Okay, so the words that are in red are the channel. Okay, so you can identify the channel name. So if you want to see what David does, you would type in or do a search on the words that are in uh, red. And then the text, say, hey, Peter, how you doing, buddy? Big hug for you and all that kind of good stuff. That's in the black, okay? But I think most of you know how to work that. And speaking of Australia, we got Roy in here. How you doing, Roy? Roy is just an amazing young man. He's got the best sense of humor. And he always comes in and supports me and loves me and makes jokes. And you got to really get his jokes because they're he does dry humor better than anybody I know. There's only somebody that Raymond comes close to him. Okay. So um, Jim is, uh, Roy is here and I'm saying hi to Roy. Love you, buddy, just in case you forgot because I love all of you guys. Uh, Jim says, what does Jim say? All right. Let's read what Jim has got to say. Let's see what camera I'm on. I'm over there. All right. Oh, now I'm over here. All right. Same model. I got two of them. One is black and one is white. Now, this one's got the more expensive lens. Okay. This one's got the uh, 50 millimeter Zeiss, Sony Zeiss lens. I got in from Vegas last night. Still boxes everywhere. Oh, that's right. He's in his new house hosting a webinar Monday. So the office, hey, I didn't get all the way through it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let's adjust that. You know, I can adjust how long a comment will stay up. So let me see how I have it up, how long I have it up for. Uh, that's not what I want. I need to go into general. Okay. So it's a little bit hard to read. 30 seconds should be enough. Okay. So let's see if I go, if I can raise this up. Where is my keyboard? Ah. Uh, Let's see if I raise this up to 45 seconds. Let's see if I can go 45. 45. All right, so I raised it up to 45 seconds. Hit enter. All right, so let's see if it works a little bit better that way. So let's start over, Jim, because it's a nice size message, and I want it to be up there long enough so that I can read it. All right, so this is a wireless keyboard in case you guys didn't recognize that. And then I'm going to turn it off because I keep running the battery down. All right. All right, so let's put this out of the way. So Jim says, I got in from Vegas last night. Uh, still boxes everywhere. It's because he's moved into a new house. Okay. Uh, Three-story house. I feel sorry for your thighs and your calves. Up the stairs, down the stairs. Up the stairs, down the stairs. It's actually exercise I should do. Uh, host, hosting a webinar on Monday, so the office has to be at least somewhat camera ready. That's cool. For anything I can do to help, by golly, just tell me. Okay. So see, the 45 seconds is a little bit better. All right. So, uh, and then I could I can put it away if I want to. Uh, I can do that manually. All right. But 45 seconds is actually uh, seems to be a little bit more comfortable because I seem to talk a lot. In case you can't tell. Okay. Sammy says, how's the stabilization on the G9 Mark II? That's a fantastic question because that would be a very key factor. Let's say you're only going to buy one camera. Could it be the G9 Mark II? Yes, it could. Especially if you're a younger guy and you got darn good skin and you look marvelous. Yeah, G9 Mark II is excellent. So the camera, the price is a little high and they use that to suck you in at the beginning for the first year, and this is pretty new. So it's coming in at uh, $19.99. The big joke is the OM system, which has their new uh, OM system uh, 1, uh, Mark II, and it's $2,300? Why the heck would you buy that for $2,300? This is a better camera for $19.99, and I've seen them $1,600. And they're going to break the $1,400 when it gets down to $1,100, $1,200 in a year, because that's what happens with Panasonic's. I'm going to nab me one. Now, you say, Peter, why? 
Why do you want one? I have thousands of dollars verse, uh, uh, full of micro four thirds lenses, f 1.2 lenses that are like a branded and they're just fantastic. And I don't have a camera to put them on. So yeah, the image stabilization, Sammy, on this is, I would say, equal to the E1. Now the E1 is a full frame camera versus a micro four thirds. So guess what I'm feeling about the E1? Yeah, it's still Peter's favorite camera. The only camera that I would even contemplate are $6,000 and 7,000. So, um, Randy, if you've got the SL2, can you see if they got any skin smoothing in that camera or anything? Uh, uh, it would be something pertaining to the mid-tones uh, where you can make the mid-tones uh, higher or lower. Um, or it could have a clarity slider. A clarity slider only addresses uh, the mid-tones and the contrast level. So what you want to do is you want to lower the contrast level for mid-tones. And when you lower the contrast level for mid-tones, it makes it smoother. But you don't want to lower the contrast for your hair. The shirt is perfect, okay? So because this camera actually has a little bit of uh, 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 skin smoothing on, I would say the color needs to be bumped up a little. Uh, I just threw this on because I, I didn't have the, uh, uh, the, the Nikon ZF, which is the Randy cam. I have it with me in my bedroom. And the E1, I have it with me in the kitchen. Okay, so uh, this is the only one I can grab and stick on there because I was going live at 10 o'clock. I need a camera. I didn't want to talk to you with a blank screen. So I had to decide if I was going to make a dash for the bedroom and get the Nikon in here or just grab the uh, E10 off the desk and put it up here. So I would say this could use a little bit of a color boost. Let's do this. Let's play, okay? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take this E1 and I'm going to manually, okay, through Ecamm, it should be done in the camera. I'm going to manually raise the saturation just a little bit, okay? So I bumped up the saturation on the E10 and tell me, did I do good or did I stick myself in the nose? <laughs> yeah. It looks better here. I, how does it look over there? So that's kind of what I'm curious. So what I usually do is this. Let's say I get it just the way I like it. Okay. I will always bring it down a little bit just to err on the safety side. So let's say there's a bunch of you going like, oh, no, it's way too much. Well, I can't hear you. Okay. So I'm going to lower it down just a little bit. So now the saturation is raised uh, only just slightly. Okay. So uh, that was Sammy. And Sammy said that the stabilization on the uh, G9 Mark II, how is it? Thumbs up. Better than almost every other camera, but not better than my E1. Okay. Or let's say it's equal to. So, and then Sammy is agreeing. The E1 is amazing. And you know what would be the perfect camera that I would buy in a heartbeat? Honest to God, the perfect camera is if they took all the guts. No, let me not say that, okay? If they took uh, the image stabilization from the Sony ZV-E1, only that. No, there's two things I want. And moved it into the FX30, which is what Sammy uses because he's a filmmaker. He's going to college in, at the university uh, in filmmaking school, number one. And number two, he's already made films. So it's not like he's learning to do it and then he's going to do it. So Sammy has already done it on numerous times. As a matter of fact, my name is on one of his posters. It's hanging up right there on the wall. I'm actually one of the somethings. I don't know if I'm a producer or something. So he gave me an honorary position because I, I stepped in to try to help the young man out. He's a good boy. He's a wonderful kid. So uh, he put my name on his, uh, you know, promotional material. So if I could get two things from the E1 into the FX30, I'd buy the FX30 in a heartbeat. It has a fan. It's got a mode button up in front. I have the hardest time trying to change the modes on my E1. 
You know, I'm going to have to assign it to a, a button. Okay, well, the FX30 has got a mode button. All right, because I do change the modes. When I'm in here, I'm in manual mode. Okay, when I go in the uh, uh, TV room or I'm out in the yard or something, I put the camera completely automatic. I don't want to fidget with the shutter speed and the aperture and all. I want the camera to handle everything. ISO, color balance, all of that. I, I just want an easy way to do that. And the FX30 has that. So if, it, if uh, the FX30, when they make an FX30 Mark II, uh, if they would take the image stabilization that I have in the uh, E1 and put it into the FX30, all right, uh, and take the dual ISO. They have a dual ISO in the um, E1 that's second to none, all right? It's ISO 640, and then you can go up, 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 and at 12,800, boom, you're right back to ISO 640 in terms of quality, noise level. So you could get an uh, F4.0 uh, lens, put it on the uh, uh, E1, set your ISO to 12,800, because if you're at ISO 10,000 or 8,000, it's going to start to get noisy, even though it's full frame. It's going to do a great job, don't get me wrong, okay? But it will start to get noisy. But if you manually move it up to 12,800, the noise is gone. The noise is gone, okay? And that is a major thing. If they move those two things, and it's got even a lot more, over to the FX30, I'm in, baby. I count me in, okay? So where did I leave off? Uh, Sammy is saying skin is important. And he's 19 years old. So he's recognizing, because he does filmmaking, sometimes you'll have a guy that's heavy on acne or, or something, and, and you just want to clean up his face in the camera. Well, the face targets that skin tone and leaves everything else alone, okay? So if you were doing naked shots, which none of us should be doing, okay, it's going to skin tone your whole, your whole body because if you're not wearing clothes, your body's skin is all the same color as your face, all right, unless you got a bad tan. So, uh, but it'll smooth that out too. So it is uh, important. So thanks for backing me up on that, Sammy. So Shane says, I found the G9 II uh, very flattering compared with my FX30, which ages me about five years. That's an interesting statement. So I hope you do a video on that, all right, because that's an important feature. It's uh, important for us to look good. What, what was that? Uh, there was a comedian that used to say, it is, it's better to look good than to feel good. And I can't remember the guy's name. Apparently, he's not very memorable. So Sammy's asking me, how is the autofocus? The autofocus on here is splendid. Oh, my God, they put phase detection. And it's got phase detection. So there's a difference between phase detection and phase detection. Phase detection is a type of focus system, okay? And it is the type where it reads the individual pixels and brings your, your, your uh, uh, focus into focus instantly because it is looking at uh, comparing certain things that it's just called phase. I can't explain it that deeply. I can, but I, I'm going to go on and on if I do that, okay? So the other type is contrast detection. Contrast detection is what uh, Lumix has been running on Micro Four Thirds and on their full-frame cameras, the G9, not the Mark II, Micro Four Thirds, the GH6 uh, uh, is also a Micro Four Thirds. Those have contrast detection. The S5, not the S5 Mark II, but the S5, the S1, the S1R, the S1H, which are full-frame cameras from Panasonic, okay, uh, those all have contrast detection, which means it's not the kind of focus system that I would like to be running, all right? I could say something a lot meaner than that, like, why the heck didn't they put the good focus system in it three years ago? Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be nice, okay? Now they put the good focus system 
It is on par with everybody else. They are at the big boy table. They are no longer at the kitty table, okay? So their focus system works, and it works a treat to talk like over the pond. It works amazing to talk American talk. And yes, it's in this camera, and it's in when you get to the S5 Mark II. So all the cameras in here, all right, this is the S5 Mark II. That body and this body are identical. They're using the same body. There is, there is nothing that I can find. Maybe there is something, but there's nothing that I can find that's different other than the fact that the Lumix S5 Mark II, which is what you're looking at right now. See, it says up here, Panasonic S5 Mark II. Under here, it's got um, like uh, a fan built in, and it sucks it in here, and it blows it out here. That's missing from this camera. It doesn't have uh, any kind of cooling. Now, I haven't had any, any, any overheating problems. And I have looked high and low, okay, for overheating problems with the G9 Mark II. The G9 Mark II, by the way, is all about the lenses, dudes, okay? You're going to buy this camera not because it's micro four-thirds and you got a smaller sensor than everything else in here, why would you want that? But there's a huge advantage to having a smaller sensor. So these guys that go like, if it doesn't have a full frame, I'm out of the pool. I don't want to even, don't talk to me, Peter. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. There's a reason for this. The camera is a micro four thirds, which is like three or four times the size of a one inch sensor. Okay, so that new pocket uh, Osmo Pocket version 3 uh, camera is a one-inch sensor. This has a micro four-thirds, okay? So it's about the lenses. You know, a 300-millimeter lens might not be much bigger than that because the micro four-thirds doesn't have to be this big lens, okay? And it winds up shooting for you at 600-millimeter. Do you know what a 600-millimeter le lens would look like on a Canon or an Icon or a full-frame Sony? It would be like that. And if you went to 800, yeah, they do have a 400 millimeter lens in the micro four thirds. It would be, I don't think I could stretch on how big an 800 millimeter. Now, you know how big it would be here? About here. <laughs> and, and maybe 1 20th of the weight. So micro four thirds is about the lenses. So I have a lens that comes in at 85 millimeters. It's a 42.5 f1.2. It's got a, like a branding on it. It's made by Lumix, but it's like a branding. One of the most beautiful pictures that I ever get is from that lens. And with this camera in the room, I can put it on here. So you might ask me, because I asked this question. Now, it might be a dumb question, but you might ask me, Peter, can you get a, an adapter to put your Micro Four Thirds lens on your uh, S5 Mark II? No, because it's backwards. You would actually have to get too close to the sensor. You'd have to be in the sensor because that's the distance of the sensor. Now, what you can get is you can get adapters to put these lenses on your Sony's or on Nikon's, and I'm not saying which camera goes for which lenses, but the Nikon and the Sony seem to have the best uh, array of adapters. So I could take my old Konica Hexanon lenses from 1970s and put them on my Sony cameras because I have an adapter for that. It's manual focus, it's manual settings, yes, but it's what they call vintage lenses, and they're fantastic. All right, let's get back to you guys. Because the time, you, I told you I talk a lot. You didn't believe me? Well, I had to prove it. Okay. So let's go. Uh, all right. So Shane found it flattering. Okay. So my ears perked up. All right. And then Sammy said, how's the autofocus? The autofocus is, is, is like a nice French chef. Um, the, the, the chef at, uh, uh, was making their autofocus system before was from 7-Eleven, the 7-Eleven chef. So 1.7 is nice. Yes, it makes it very comfortable, Sammy. Um, Charles, hi, everybody. I was just watching your video, Charles. Charles got an SL3. So the SL3 is, um, 
I think $6,900, $7,000. It's a Leica. It's a top-of-the-line Leica. And they've got the Panasonic autofocus system in the SL3. And it's a 60-megapixel full-frame camera. I mean, you are drooling for that camera. Now, that system is going to come... Uh, I guess they got some kind of a deal, all right, so they don't both come out with competing things at the same time. But Leica's partner in crime, okay, is Panasonic. So my guess is the S1R is going to become what the Leica SL3 is now. It's going to be like a 60 megapixel sensor because these guys work together. Uh, Leica, Sigma, Panasonic, Lumix, they work together and they create stuff together. So it is basically things to come. So when you see Leica comes out with the SL3 and all the great stuff that's in there, but it's six, seven thousand dollars, you'll be able to get it for like four thousand dollars and have whatever Panasonic's twist is on the camera. And that is what's coming down the pike. So it's great news. Now, if you want if you want bragging rights, because that's what Leica is. Leica is for lawyers and doctors. They don't want to drive around a Chevrolet. None of them drive around a Chevy, okay? They want to drive around Hasselblad, or they want to drive around a BMW or Rolls-Royce or a Bentley. They want the name, okay? And that's what Leica gives you. And Leica has Leica shops. All they got in there is Leica gear. They're boutique shops. There's one here in Miami. There's in New York. There's definitely in California where they got some money over there. I mean, they take all your money, but you make more money. So, uh, you know, it's, it's bragging rights. The Leica SL3, would I own one? Absolutely. If I was rich, I would want that little red thing. Now, the trouble with the little red, it's a little red circle that identifies it as a Leica. It also identifies you for thieves. So if you're walking and you go to uh, a tourist area, uh, Disney World or New York City or Miami Beach or downtown Miami, there the thieves, the high-end thieves, know that the camera with the red dot is worth more than all the other cameras out there. Okay? And it's identified with a red dot. As a matter of fact... Leica has some bodies where they black out the red dot for that purpose. And what the rest of us do that have a red dot camera, meaning a Leica camera, we take a piece of black tape and we put it over there because we don't want to be targets of hit and run. Smash you over the head, grab the camera, have uh, shears, cut it off your, your neck because usually you'll have it around your neck, and run like heck. Okay, so the SL3 is fantastic. And it's bragging rights, baby. So if you want to be hot, S-H-I-T, you buy a Leica. Because 50% of the people that own the Leica is because they want the bragging rights. They don't know how to use the camera. They don't know how to make a good picture out of it. They just want to say, I have a Leica. Hmm? I have a Leica. Bah. Ooh, can, can I get your autograph? Okay. So the Leica is all about bragging rights. So if you want to see firsthand from somebody you know about the Leica, look up Charles, and he will actually uh, run the camera through with you because he's got it in his hot little hands. Now, I don't know how long he's going to own it because Charles is definitely a Fuji man. He loves Fuji. He eats Fuji. He sleeps with Fuji. He poops Fuji. Uh, Charles is Fuji, Fuji, Fuji. And if you talk about anything else and Charles comes into the conversation, you can bet your last dime that he's going to be talking about Fuji. That's just the way Charles is. He's got a Fuji chip in his brain. He loves Fuji. And you know what? Fuji's a good camera. So Charles hooked his cart onto the right star. He shoots Fujis in and out, up and down. Okay. So he's added himself a Leica to his little Fuji collection. So he's get up there into the new new echelons. Uh, oh, well, wait, he is a doctor. He is an authentic doctor. 
If you went to the medical school of something, you would find Charles Richard there as a doctor. Here he is right here. He is a neurosurgeon. So the guy has got something between his ears. He operates on people. He puts them out and goes in with the scalpel. That's what Charles does. So if you see him, go the other way. <laughs> Especially if he has a knife in his hand, go the other way and go fast. All right. New shirt? Yes, this is a Van Heusen because the cut is nicer. And it fits me better. So that's all I got to say about that. Okay. So Shane says, I sent you an email. Okay, I'll go get it, but not right now. Okay. I'm sitting on the toilet right now, so I can't get over there. Oh, wait, I'm live. So Sammy says, email is so old school. Peter gets the email. Okay. I do, but Peter gets the email. I do have email. It's something new. I'm talking to you to Sumilali Nikana Catalaveni Sileo. Inekati Kenurio is a something new in this world. It's a called email. You push what you type with the keyboard where you put your finger and you go down, 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 and then you say hello, H E L L O, and you push the button and she goes, she leaves you. She goes out. And she finds the person that's up in New York uh, or over in Greasy, Greeky, Greasy over there. And it show your letter shows up over there. It's something new called email. Email, she's a beautiful. And my, my grandmama, I have to send her email. And she, I don't know how to use email, Peter. Peter, I don't know how to use email. And I say, Abuela, Grandma. Granny, 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 you old lady, you. Okay, I show you how, Granny, the old lady, I show you how to work your email. Yes, so I'm still in email. My email is even AOL. I even have it listed in the description below. So you can send me an email and say hello if you want. It's fine. So let's see. Pop, pop, pop. Sammy says, New Jersey for the win. Sammy, if you're in New Jersey, I'll give you a million dollars. And if you're not in New Jersey, you don't get the money, okay? Of course, it's Monopoly money. So Roy is saying, Sammy, 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 email is so very old school. I've been using it since 1976. Now you know why I'm on AOL. Wait a minute. I need to aim this towards me. So that's Roy. Roy, I wouldn't talk that much about, you know, you, you're not exactly the youngest chick in the, in the roost. He knows that. I'm teasing him. Every, that's the good thing about everybody in here. I could tease everybody in here <laughs> because you're all like family to me. I could tease you. If I make you mad, I'll just apologize. I'll give you a big smack kiss, a wet kiss right on your cheek. So David says, I'm doing very well, thank you. I'll make you a mod again. Oh, what a sweetheart. That's okay. You don't have to. I'm not pushing you into it. There's people over there dying to be a mod. Make them a mod. I just considered it a privilege and an honor to be a mod on your show. goes to show you how much you like me. Sammy says, I have great skin. I'm going to examine your skin the next time I see you, Sammy. And I'm going to see if you really have good skin or not. I'm going to look over every inch and see if your skin is terrific or not. Well, wait, I better not say that too loud because he's 19. His skin is perfect. So Sammy says, uh, $2,300? $2,300? What do you think? I'm made out of money. He's talking about the OM system. $2,300 for a micro four thirds. Guess what size? Guess what size their thing is on that camera? Where does size make a difference on the cameras? Never mind the male body. Where does size make a difference on the camera? You'll get it if I give you enough time. It's got a micro HDMI port on a $2,300 camera. There is something mentally wrong with OM system. Is there a counselor in the house? Do we have a physiatrist here? We do. We got to send my physiatrist to go and fix the brain in OM system. Yes, 
Tonight I'm in a Greek mood, okay? Now, if I start to talk like Joey, I better not. I'll probably get in trouble. I could get banned from, from what's their names? So Sammy is uh, exclaiming. Uh, the SL2S does not have skin smoothing. You should put that. I'm glad I remembered what I was asking you. So uh, let's see what we got. The SL2S. Okay. So we got Pete. No, not Pete. We got Cody. Wow, the ZVE10 is decidedly worse image. Good to be, good to see the contrast in the other two. Thank you. I'll have to check on it. Okay. So what are we running on here? So this is the E. Uh, let's go back over to uh, the this one. Actually, that doesn't look bad to me, Cody. It looks pretty good. So are you saying the contrast is not very good here? Why don't we, why don't we, uh, well, you know, I know better than to do this, okay? Because what you see on your monitor and what I see on mine is two different things, all right? So now I raised up the contrast just a hair and along with the saturation, just the hair. And then what I should also do is raise up the brightness just a hair, okay? So I just fine tune it a little bit. Now, I don't know if I did anything good. I, it really doesn't matter. So I use the uh, iPad as where I can tell if it's right. So I got computers all over the place, but the Windows computer shows up something one way. Um, the uh, iMac shows it a different way. Uh, every computer shows it different. So in the same show, someone will say, oh, your face is too yellow. And then somebody else in the same show, same camera, they'll say, your face is too red. Now, red and yellow are on the opposite from each other. So I always look at it, uh, Cody, on the um, iPad. And I make it right for the iPad, and then the hell with it. it it's, what do they say? that uh, It is what it is. Okay. So uh, Roy says the new Leica is more exciting than Nikon buying red. It is, because it means a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, it looks over-sharpened to me. I was talking about the colors. So I'll have to look on the sharpness. You know, I didn't check that, Woody. I don't know. Um, the E10 looks like it is in 720p today for some reason. But remember, I'm running two E10s. Okay, so this is one. All right. And where's the other? Okay, so this is one. And this is the other one. So this one is the same thing week after week. I, no adjustments, nothing. All right, so this is an E10. Now this is another E10, okay? And uh, on this one, I would say it does look even over-sharpened here a little bit, Woody. Okay. And Shane is saying it looks like in 720. Okay. Boy, we are E10 slamming today. Okay. So Charles is talking to Roy. And Sammy says, I love the FX30. And that's good. And Charles says, I love my new SL3. You better not spend that much money on it, big boy. You listen to me, Doc. Huh? I could do exam. I could do a physical exams too, you know. Turn around. I'm gonna put my glove on. <laughs> you better not spend that kind of money and say you don't like it. Uh, so Shane says, "Gotta go, guys. I'm playing in a festival today." Shane is a professional uh, guitarist, top of the line. He does gigs. He does albums, he does CDs, he does uh, session work, he works in studios, he works on stage, and he plays amazing. <clears throat> so I guess I should say, Shane, can I have your autograph? Next time you come, I want to get your autograph. So Roy says, I love real Leica engineering. I agree. And Charles is talking also to Roy. So Charles and Roy are talking to each other. Here's Mookie Mac. 
Uh, Billy Crystal is the character. Oh, my God. Thank you. I couldn't think of that, Mook. Mook, I couldn't think of it. You know, you look marvelous. It's better to look good than to feel good. You look marvelous. Yep, Billy Crystal. Dang, 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 dang. Okay, I'm going to pass over the, uh, the personal conversations because uh, I'm getting close to 11. And my, I, remember, I talk too much and I go over. Okay, so uh, petertalksalot.com. <laughs> I wonder if I could get petertalksalot.com. I like that, Sammy. Oh, my goodness. Um, Charles says, no, Leica has a new autofocus system, which will possibly be the next uh, Panasonic generation. It is phase detection with AI. It, has, it is the first camera with autofocus with AI. That's not true because this Lumix, the G9 Mark II, is one step better than the uh, S5 Mark II. Why? because the G9 has advanced their focus system and they're working together with Leica. So Leica would have the more advanced system over the S, where is my S5 Mark II? So I do have to say I do experience that, where when I took the camera off of the tripod, the S5 Mark II, and compared the focus on the G9 Mark II with the S5 Mark II, the G9 is better. So Leica will have the most advanced version of the Panasonic focus system in the SL3, okay? So the SL3 has Panasonic's most advanced focus system, and when they come out with the S1R, it'll even beat the Leica because they will have had three months, if not four, to fine-tune the, the, the focus system that's in the Leica. So the better actual buy, you don't get the, I mean, who wants a Panasonic? Ew, it's a toaster, right? You don't want that, especially if you're hungry for labels, right? You want the Leica name. You want the Leica uh, brand on your camera, and you could buy it. And the doctor did, which proves my point. He's a doctor. He bought a Leica. The Leicas are for doctors. They're for rich guys, Okay that want to go to a boutique, they want their cup of coffee, their little candy, and they want to be treated like royalty. Panasonic ain't going to do that. They're going to say, get out of here. You get what we give you. And they've been doing that to us for years. <laughs> so Sammy says, if Peter was a rich man, if I was a rich man, Yibby dibby 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 dooby dooby doo, Scooby dooby 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 doo. If I was a very wealthy man. So let's see. Bum 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 bum. Okay, so Charles is saying uh, speculation. S1 H2 will have this. I don't know if the H or the R, one of those. I'm thinking it's the R because it's the high resolution because the new sensor from Panasonic that's in the SL3 is 60 megabytes. So that's their big baby. Now the H, if I'm remembering correctly, would be the media version. I don't know why they didn't call it the M. Okay, So um, I, I don't think it'll have, uh, you know, uh, the high-end... Uh, uh, sensor but as they come out with each one and now panasonic leica panasonic lumix will update in firmware and give you better stuff yes they will okay so what company will not sony okay sony will give you a brand new camera like the e1 and they won't go back into the fx30 or the fx3 which is a four thousand dollar camera Okay, and upgrade your firmware. Bad Sony, bad Sony. Then he said, Well, I'm not speaking Latin, I'm talking Greek. Okay. Bup, bup. So Charles says the only issue with the SL3 is that the Leica lenses are more expensive than the Leica camera. And they are. But Leica has Leica lenses 
that are made by Sigma, not made by Leica, and they're branded by Leica. It'll say, you would have no idea it was made by Sigma, okay? Only price will tell you. And they have some of those, and they have some of the super duper, very expensive, I want to suck out all the money out of your wallet lenses. So, uh, Charles, here's what I'm going to tell you, big guy. Get the L-mount lenses from Sigma that you like and try them. You'll save some cash. So you could, sp you could spend all your cash on the girls that you find on the beach. So when you find these cutie pies on the beach and you're flirting with them, okay, you'll have Leica lenses and Leica cameras and you'll save some cash. Yeah, I'm saying C-E-C-H because the Greeks don't say cash. They go cash, cash. Okay, I'm in a Greek mood tonight. I think I'm going to have me some tzatziki sauce after I, I... Oh, we've hit the 11. Peter has talked his whole hour. Peter talks a lot. Dot com. Sammy, you are brilliant, buddy. I'm going to give you the biggest fat, slobbery kiss and wet your whole face. I love that. Bup, bup, bup. Charles says, I do like the color of your new shirt. So I bought three colors. Red, which is the one that you guys like. You keep going like, oh, that, that shirt looks good on you. Blue, which is similar to the blue shirt that you guys go, I like that color. And it was two fur, so I bought a green one. Now I have RGB shirts. Oh, my God, I didn't think of that. I have RGB shirts, okay? This is not a Van Heusen. This is an RGB. <laughs> um, Charles says, oh, he's talking to Roy, and Roy's talking to Charles, and they're talking to each other. ba 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 and now the uh, Leica SL3 has a brand new menu system. That's good news. Now Charles would know. The ZV-E10 with the Sony lens looks uh, better. Okay. Uh, Lammy, uh, Lammy. Lammy, Sammy. Sammy Lammy. He's like my little Sammy had a little lamb. It's 1101. Yeah, I know. It's getting dangerously close to um, Sly. Now Sly will be coming on. God willing, and the bridge isn't up, and she's got a winner, winner, chicken dinner going. I don't know where she will be. Uh, I think she'll be home, but I think she's going to have the prize possession of the night with her. She is going to have something better than any like a stinky, lousy, like a camera. Any stinky, lousy, has a bad camera. It's her grandson. I think she's going to have her grandson with her tonight. So we're going to have two hosts on the Sly Reader channel. So she'll be on 11.30, and I'm going to get off before 11.30, okay? So Charles says, I'm just gearing up with reliable quality gear for my upcoming trip to Thailand. So are you telling me that you're, you're, you're trashing Fuji? You don't like Fuji anymore? That's a big, that's a big news item. That's a flip-flop. You know how politicians will flip-flop? They'll say one thing and then they'll say another. Charles, you're not doing that on me, are you? Charles, Charlesy baby, are you flip-flopping on me? So tell me that you still love Fuji, okay? I just have to hear it because it's like a shot to the heart and Charles is to blame. You give Fuji a bad name. Banana. Okay, never mind. All right. So, Philip is here. Hello, Philip Vastolopoulos. Vasto, oh, Vastopoulos. Hello, my friend from Montreal, Canada. Posiste mi las linica y ti tono masu no miso ini linica. Ti sa supo etsi fenetet. You know, it looks, I'm telling him your name looks Greek to me. So, um, if he doesn't uh, speak Greek, it's like the rest of you. It's going right over his head. So I spoke Greek before I spoke English up until the age of five years old. At five years old, when I was going to start school, my parents had to start teaching me English because did you know that the American school system, they don't speak Greek? They speak English. They speak it to English. What's up with that? I'm just uh, kind of amazed, you know. What can I tell you? So let's lower this a little safety here. Okay, so good to see you, Philip. I love you, buddy. I do. I thank everybody. Um, 
So Sammy says, Peter talk. Uh, Peter talks a lot at AOL.com. I'm going to look into that. Sammy, I'm gonna, when I get my hands on you, I'm going to tickle you extra. Sammy likes to be tickled, so this is not being nasty. Uh, Roy says, uh, my monitor is due for a replacement. It's, it's your age. You're getting dim. The Bible says, and Moses was old and his sight was not dimmed. You're not Moses, Roy. You're not Moses, dude. I keep telling you. It's OLED by LG and it's four years old. And Sammy says, bad Sony. Bad, bad, bad Sony. Sony. Uh, save some cash. Absolutely. Uh, Charles says, the issue is that there is a real difference in the lenses by what photos they produce. Uh, Roy says, people confuse AI with machine learning. Yep, that's true. Listen to Roy. Eat your spinach and listen to Roy. AI has been in cameras since the 1980s. Okay, so this is the this is the flip flop of the evening. This is like a Republican turning Democrat for somebody that loves Trump now loves Biden. Charles says I'm officially leaving Fuji. Oh, Charles, how could you? You're breaking the hearts of women all over the world, Charles. Oh God, your next thing you're going to tell me is you're not really a doctor, that you're a fake. Are you a fake doctor, Charles? I can't believe that you are leaving Fuji. When I would say something about Canon, Charles would come in and say, but Fuji's better. And if I would say something about Nikon, and we're all talking hot about Nikon, Charles would come in and say, but Fuji's better. And now Fuji has been stabbed in the back by Charles. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. All of heaven and earth is shaking. Charles, what are you talking about? Okay. I have moved up to the camera of Beverly Hills. That's about right. So Philip says, I'm Ime Elinos. And I was born in Canada. I know, it sounds crazy. I'm telling... Philip, that I put the tzatziki sauce, which is the red cucumber sauce, and I make it in a blasphemous way. The, the real tzatziki sauce is supposed to be made with yogurt and actually should be made with Greek yogurt. Where's Scott? Every time I talk about food, I think of Scott. Okay. And, but I don't. I make it with sour cream. Oh, my yaya, my grandmother would go, oh, <laughs> it used to make me laugh. And I make it with sour cream and I chop up the cucumber and garlic and then more garlic and then even a little more garlic. And then I put a little olive oil and a little more olive oil and then maybe a little more garlic and cucumber and pepper and dill. You got to put dill in there and sour cream only. No Greek yogurt. It's authentic Peter Gregg tzatziki sauce. Does it taste better than the real tzatziki sauce? You Bet your bippy it does. The people come over and when they have my tzatziki sauce, I've never had tzatziki sauce that good. Even my grandmother said, I can't bring myself to give her the heart attack of the ages and tell her I didn't make it with, sour, with, uh, with uh, Greek yogurt, Grandma. I made it with sour cream. She'd go, oh, it's the big one. No, she's not black. <laughs> Sanford and Son. Okay. I can get petertalksalot.com. Oh, so it is available. Well, don't take it. I might want to get it. What would I do with it? We'll talk. When I, uh, when, I get my, when I get a hold of you, we'll talk. All right, guys. I've made it to the end. I am so happy. I'm uh, so happy. I'm so happy. I'm being silly tonight. Did I have anything to drink? No. I'm doing all right. All right, guys. Um, I need you to click on the B&H link, okay? Even if you're not buying anything, I need you to do that. Would you do that for me, please? Please, please, please? In the description below is the B&H link to this. You don't have to buy anything. It doesn't cost you anything. <clears throat> 
it'll tell B and H that I'm sending people to them that are, I'm talking about the G9 Mark II camera because next next month I want to get the um, uh, Osmo Pocket Three camera to to play with. It's intrigued me, so I do want to get that camera. Now they're going to look at my performance from March, so I do need your help, and I'm asking you, please. Click on the link in the description, okay? And do it a few times this week. Don't just do it now. Do it on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Da -da 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 -dum. Never on Sunday, okay? Uh, but anyway, so I need your help on that because I just got the camera. Now they're keeping track of me, <laughs> okay? So that's how you can help me. Please, 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 all right? All right, so I thank you for being here, this is the end of the show. If you're watching this on the Rewind, good golly, Miss Molly, please write me a comment. Say hello. Click on the B&H link and, and then look around on the B&H website on whatever it is you want to, whatever you want to look at. doesn't matter. If you're going to buy something, click the B&H link and then buy it. Actually, um, Kyle asked me to put the B&H link in my About on my, um, uh, what is it? The I don't know if I put it here. I'm going to have to check that out. So all you got to do is come into the Peter Gregg Live or the big channel, Peter Gregg. Go where the about is, copy that link, and you can uh, go there. And if I don't have it right, Sammy will straighten my ASS out, and we'll get it fixed up for you. All right, thank you for being here. Um, listen, I have a question to ask. How many people we got in here? We got 11 people in here. I got a question to ask, okay? So it doesn't matter which political party that I assign myself uh, to. I want to do something patriotic, okay? So you know I have the outro that goes, Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Well, I'm thinking of playing the visual, but I'm take, take out the guy's voice and just say the Pledge of Allegiance at the end of my videos. It's very touching. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good night.